Hi, my name is Dawn. I'm the Teen Services Specialist at Orville Public Library. I'm going to show you how to use OverDrive from Clevenet. To access OverDrive, you'll go to the Orville Public Library website, which is the site that I have up here, and you'll select the eMedia tab. The first option on the eMedia page is OverDrive from Clevenet. You can click on the text and also click on the icon, and that will take you to the website. Now, Clevenet is the library cooperation that we are a part of. It includes 40 library systems over Northeast Ohio and offers over 12 million titles that you gain access to with your library card. To be able to search and put those items on hold and read any of those titles, you'll want to sign in. The sign in button is on the left. I'm sorry, it's on the right hand side of the screen here. Now you'll enter your library card number and your PIN. This card number is found on the back of your library card and the PIN is going to be the last four digits of your phone number. That's the default that we use here at Orville Public Library. I would recommend just pausing this video for just a moment if this is your first time logging in and uh, giving your yourself a chance to, to do that. So if you wanna just go ahead and pause and enter your information, and then we will start our adventure. Congratulations on logging into OverDrive for the first time. Since I am the Teen Services Specialist, I'm gonna click on the Teens tab to search for some young adult materials. You can search a title or an author, by using the search bar, uh, it says search, it's that magnifier icon. You'll be able to search for any title or author that you might be interested in. The first thing that you might notice uh, on a page here is an item that says waitlist versus other ones that say available. Just like on a bookshelf in the actual library building, there are only so many digital copies of books. You can put them on hold just like you would put a regular book, a traditional book on hold um, or audiobook as well. So let's start out by checking out an ebook. Now, if you'll notice under each title, there's a little bit of information. You'll see an icon that looks like an open book. It will say ebook. All the way over here on the right, Legend by Marie Lu. This is an audiobook. And it, it says audiobook as well as having the headphones icon. So if you're not sure, you can always look at that information below your book cover image and find that. So let's check out The uh, Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. This is an ebook. You'll just click on the picture of the cover to be able to go to that book's page and find some information about it. You can see right away how many digital copies there are in total and how many of those are available. In this case, six of the 12 copies of Thunderhead are available. You can see that the book has been reviewed um, and some other description and information down there. Now, to borrow the book, you'll start by clicking on that big red borrow button, and you'll have this dialog box that comes up. Now, immediately you can see here that uh, the default is to borrow for 21 days, it's how long it is to borrow a traditional physical book as well. You can shorten that by clicking on the little drop down arrow, but we're gonna go ahead and borrow for 21 days. So again, I'll click that red borrow button. Success, it tells me. It also tells me a return date. Any ebook or digital audiobook is going to automatically return. You can renew it as well, uh, but it will automatically return. So you don't have to worry about getting that digital item returned on time. Now, most of our digital titles you can also read on a Kindle. If you have a Kindle device, you can click that button. If you don't and you wanna read it in the browser, we're gonna click where it says having trouble. And there we have the option to read now in browser. So we'll just click on that and it's gonna open a new tab where our book is gonna show up. Now, I have checked out this book before and it remembered right where I was, but just like, 
uh, your physical book, you're going to have all the pages that you would have seen. So you'll have your cover, you'll have that title page. And I'm just clicking on the right side of my screen to progress through my book. If I want to go back a page, I'll click on the left side of my screen. There are some other options that you'll find as well. If you click around the middle, it's going to pop down with some other options here. Uh, it shows you your progress so far. And you can see kind of how long the book is there. On the top right, you're going to see four different icons. This first icon is whether you want to read a single page at a time or if you want to have the traditional kind of two page look at a time. So just click on that to toggle between them. And it's going to look like this for a single page. And if you click on it again, you'll get that two page view, which is what we started out with. You can search the book uh, for any specific line or word uh, using that little magnifier icon. So next icon is the bookmark. This does not act like a bookmark in the way that you usually would think. It's not holding your place. Um, it's just kind of marking a spot that you would be interested in going back to if there was a quote that you liked or a particular line or something that stood out to you, you can put a bookmark in there. These three little lines are going to give you some more options. So again, there's the search. If you click on chapters, it will show you all of the chapters in the book and the percentage for the progression through. There's a little back arrow to go back to the other options. You can see the bookmarks that you've made. And then there are reading settings. These settings can adjust the size of your text by making it bigger or smaller. Uh, you can adjust the lighting by having a bright white background, a sepia background, or if you're reading uh, in a dimly lit room, maybe you're reading in bed, then you can use that dark background. I like to use the sepia. It's not as bright, it's nicer on the eyes. Then you have some font options. Uh, there's usually whatever the publisher has put this book in um, and then some different ones if you want some serif or you don't want serif on your text. Now, the open dyslexic font is specifically uh, designed for people who do have dyslexia or some reading difficulties, kind of weights the bottom of the letters, um, which helps to be able to focus to read better. So those are some different settings that you can adjust on your, your book. Let's go ahead and go back over to that tab where we've checked out our book, and we're going to check out an audiobook. To do that, we'll just go ahead and go back to that teens section, or you can go back to the main collection if that's what you were on. We're going to find an audiobook that is available. I know as we were scrolling through that uh, Legend by Marie Lu was available. So again, I'll just click on that book title to go to the page. And we can see that three of the eight digital copies of this audiobook are available. So we'll click that big red borrow button, borrow for 21 days, and then you can download this as an MP3 or listen in your browser. There are a few settings, just like for the ebook, that you can change when you're listening in the browser. So it shows how long the book is to listen to it on a, the regular 1x speed. You click this icon that looks like a little timer. You can have it read a little bit faster with each click. Uh, some of them might be a little, a little too fast, but that's just for my taste. If you can, if you prefer a faster speed, you can do that. This little setting that looks like a moon is a sleep timer. Uh, so if you are, you know, listening in bed again, it will uh, stop the book at about after 30 minutes. So you can pick up where you left off or go back to where you fell asleep. There's the bookmark option, just like there is in the ebook. And then there's the three little lines that um, will show you the timestamps for chapters when you click on chapters, as well as all of the bookmarks that you might have made. Now, if there is a, an ebook or an audiobook that you wanna listen to, but is not currently available, there's a wait list for it. You can put a hold on, and I'm going to show you how to put a hold on next. 
Um, so if we perhaps wanted to read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, uh, there's a wait list for it, but we'll click on it. And you can read a sample, which gives you the beginning of um, the first chapter a little ways. And you can just click that place a hold button. And it immediately places that hold. It will tell you what position you're in as well. And it might give you some other titles that are similar to that too. So that is how you would place a hold. The same thing applies to an audiobook. Now, if I want to see the items that I've checked out, I will go over to my account, which is on the upper right part of the screen. Click on my account, and the first option there is going to be loans. Those would be the items that are currently loaned to you. Now, on this loans page, it says here you can borrow 18 more titles. And there are some account limits. I'm going to click on that so that we can see those account limits. So the first thing is that you can have 20 digital items checked out on your card at a time. When you return one of those items, you get that loan back. You can have up to 999 holds. And then you can also get notifications of renewing an item if there's not a hold for it. So those are a few of those limits that you'll see there. Now I'm going to pretend like I have finished listening to Legend by Marie Lu. So you'll see down below the, the book cover is this little button that says return with that arrow. When you click return, it's going to ask you if you're sure. So we'll go ahead and click return title. And when you do that, that title is going to disappear from your loan screen. And you can now see it says that I can borrow 19 more titles this month. So the other thing that you'll see on this loans page is the, the little Libby icon here. And up here it says, try Libby. Libby is uh, the app for your smart device, whether that's your smartphone or a tablet, that you can borrow any of the eBooks or the digital audiobooks and have those on your phone. Overdrive will sync between the website here and your device. It's pretty easy. You can um, download Libby on any device that has the Google Play Store or the App Store. You can also read eBooks and listen to digital audiobooks on Kindles. That process is a little bit different. That would be a whole different video. So this is how you use Overdrive. And again, you can access that by going to the Orville Public Library website and selecting eMedia. And OverDrive will be your first option there. If you have any other questions, um, can't figure it out, please feel free to visit us at the library or you can give us a call. Our phone number is right there on the webpage um, and we would be glad to answer any of your questions. So happy reading and thank you for watching.